snap. Blake back to pass. Looking right. Throws in zone. Right side. It is caught. He caught it. Touchdown, Sooners. Touchdown, Jalen Saunders. What a throw. <laughs> Sooner magic in Stillwater. Oklahoma leads with 19 seconds to play. Ask most people, and that's almost certainly the play they would circle as being the decisive play in not only the 2013 edition of Bedlam, but perhaps the Sooners' entire season. However, a deeper look reveals otherwise. 35 seconds before Jalen Saunders reeled in the game winner from Blake Bell, five plays prior to Oklahoma taking the 27-24 lead that stunned the frozen, orange-clad faithful at Boone Pickens Stadium, it was the play that was quickly forgotten, the play that went overlooked for the most part, the play that changed it all. Oh, wow. 24-20 Cowboys, 102 to go. Sooners were double-digit dogs. They've lost their quarterback. They played all three today, and they still got a chance. Back to pass Bell. Looks left, pump fake. Lobs deep down the left sideline for Bester, and it is intercepted. Justin Gilbert. It's incomplete, incomplete. Incomplete, it hit the turf. Incomplete. It fell out of his hands, Toby. Oh, my. Good job by LeColton Bester to break that up. Justin Gilbert had that football. Justin Gilbert had that football at the 10-yard line. Let's hope it doesn't get replayed. When that ball went up, I, I, I felt good about it because it was one-on-one, -on -one, but the ball was short and inside. And when Gilbert went up for it, I just knew it looked bad. It looked like he was going to pick it. And when he came down with it, it looked like he had possession with it. And But Colt just punched it, slapped it, ripped it until it finally they rolled around the ground. And the last time that he punched at it, the ball just came loose. Yeah, at first, uh, you know, I saw the Colton go up and I saw him go up and I saw it was a little short and it fell right into his hands. And I go, oh, no. And, but I saw the Colton stripping it and stripping it and, and uh, fighting to the end. And, and all of a sudden, I saw that ball pop out. So, you know, in my mind after that, I said, okay, and, you know, I gave him I gave him one, I'm not gonna give him another. Sometimes when when great athletes are are hustling in the moment, sometimes you don't realize how great a play it was until you see a replay. And you can see in a slow motion how close it was to being an interception. And and really I think most all of the coaches and the players too didn't realize what a great play that was until after we saw the highlights and saw the replays of it and then you know, I think we all acknowledged him for it. But great accomplishments are often built upon failures of the past. And the Colton Bester's improbable triumph over one of the nation's best corners was certainly no different. Earlier in the half, uh, is one of the first plays of the second half, Kendall Thompson threw a ball down our, boundary, our left boundary, uh, and it got picked off. And I think it was Bester that was the receiver he was throwing to. And the ball was short, but I, ne I never forget, I didn't say anything to Kendall. I, I grabbed the receiver and I told Bester, I said, if that ball goes in the air, if you can't catch it, my God, you make sure it doesn't get intercepted. It's very interesting. And, and LeColton even said that at the end of the game, when, when he was fighting with Justin Gilbert for that ball, that he wasn't going to be able to go back and look Jay Norvell in the face uh, if he hadn't made that play and let Justin Gilbert intercept it. Of course, Bester did make the play, and just as he had capitalized upon his opportunity to earn redemption, so too did Blake Bell. His errant pass could have stifled the rally and doomed the Sooners. They don't call him Blake Bedlam Bell for nothing. Well, no, I mean, I, that's a great point. I mean, Blake Bell is a, is a, uh, he's a folk hero. You know, he came, came in and uh, in some ways uh, saved the Bedlam game of 2012 for Oklahoma with that fourth down play. So uh, he, a year later, he's the hero in Stillwater, and uh, he, can, uh, he can sort of ride off into the sunset from quarterback with his head held high. You know, quarterbacks are a different breed. They, they feel like, uh, you know, it's not like moving from defensive end to linebacker or moving from running back to wide receiver. If, if, you, if you leave the quarterback position, there's a sort of, a, uh, oh, there's sort of an unannounced assumption of failure. And if you, can, if you can walk away from quarterbacking with that last play that Blake Bell 
uh, ran that, that touchdown pass to Jalen Saunders to win a monumental game in a hostile environment, a, a game and a play that will be remembered for decades and decades uh, among the Sooner fans. Um, you know, you don't walk away as a failure. You walk away as a success. I don't know whether Blake Bell would have left OU uh, and transferred uh, after the Sugar Bowl or after the bowl game if he had thrown that interception, but I would certainly understand if he maybe wanted to get out of Norman after he throws an interception that costs OU the Bedlam game, uh, then goes on and doesn't start the bowl game. He might have a little bit more incentive uh, to want to leave. Instead, he, he is really excited about the future of OU and decides to come back. He seems like a team guy. He seems like a guy who uh, wants to be a Sooner, but at the same time, I mean, the last pass he ever w would have thrown in his OU career would have been an interception. Of course, it wasn't. Instead, his last pass was a dagger, straight into the Cowboys' collective heart. You know, you, you look out there sometimes as a quarterback, and you might see a coverage, a coverage and a play, uh, you know, and, and all of a sudden you start, you know, licking your chops because you, you love it, you love what you see, and that's kind of what I saw. I go, this is a play, this is it, we're going to score, we're going to win here, and Jalen ran a great route, beat the one-on-one -on -one coverage, and I just threw it out there to him, he ran under and caught it, so it was, uh, it was picture perfect. But to the Pokes, it was pathetically painful. The ugly ending, overwhelming evidence that this result would have long-lasting ramifications. Well, if they don't win that game, they obviously don't go to the Sugar Bowl and beat Alabama. Trevor Knight isn't a Heisman Trophy candidate this year. OU's probably not a favorite to be in the top four in the playoff, the first college football playoff. Um, but beyond that, um, even little things like we don't know who Michelle Pritchett is, the Alabama fan who and was kicking and punching at a mouthy OU fan during the Sugar Bowl and became a viral sensation. Um, Blake Bortles goes in to the Fiesta Bowl and, and just tears apart Baylor's defense, goes on to become a top five pick. Would he have done that to OSU's defense? I, I don't think that he would have. Um, Michael Sam, uh, who obviously becomes the first NFL openly gay player, ends his college career by sacking Clint Shelf and stripping the ball loose, securing their win. All of these things don't happen if Justin Gilbert intercepts that pass. But uh, let's say the Cowboys go out to the uh, Fiesta Bowl and do what they should do, which is win. All of a sudden, they're 12 and one. They're gonna finish fourth in the country in the, in the final polls. They got two Big 12 titles in the last three years, and their, their entire program is in a different light. So uh, it was just, to me, it was a cataclysmic play because it, it sent these two programs on such div divergent paths elevated the Sooners, pushed the Cowboys sort of off the stage and off the spotlight, and uh, really uh, makes the future uh, different to, to the point where, you know, we're, we're sort of down on the Cowboys and really high on the Sooners, and it could have been very different if, uh, you know, if Oklahoma State wins that game. Instead, it's the Sooners who are overwhelming favorites to win the Big 12, as the Cowboys are picked to finish fifth. Meanwhile, Oklahoma, has ridden the rising tide of momentum. $370 million worth of stadium renovations are set to take place at Memorial Stadium over the next few years. Flashy new alternate uniforms were recently revealed. And the sweet success at the Sugar Bowl paid immediate dividends in recruiting. You know, the fundraising for the, for the, uh, for the stadium renovations, much easier. The salesmanship with the fans on the new uniforms, everything's just easier when you win. So I think the Sooners would have new uniforms. I think they'd have a stadium plan if they'd have gone to the Alamo Bowl and played Oregon State. But it would have been a tougher landscape in which to deal with that stuff. And, and this has uh, just bubbled up enthusiasm. It's, uh, it's uh, increased pride. It sort of restored the, the, uh, oh, the uh, status of the Sooners as a, as a legitimate national power, not just this season, but over the long term, that, hey, this is what Oklahoma does. It wins football games like this. And when that happens, uh, it just makes uh, the entire business of college football much easier. I mean, I, I can't remember a more satisfying season. And, and uh, you know, it just goes to show one play can make a difference in that.